Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about time management, which is a topic that is very near and dear to me. You've heard it before and I'll say it again. Failing to plan is planning to fail. It is so important that you manage your most precious resource, your time, because if you don't, you're going to find your life is way more stressful and you make a lot less money than you could if you were much more efficient with your time. There's a big distinction between a professional real estate agent and a Pop-Tart real estate agent. And a lot of people live in the Pop-Tart world and don't even realize it. So let me know if these kind of relate to you at all. One, do you feel that you're always 10, 15 minutes late for an appointment? If you're always rushing to your next appointment, do you feel that you're pulled in many different directions that you have a lot of obligations, responsibilities, family, uh, business, clients, nagging clients that are pulling at you, uh, buyers are demanding to see houses all the time. If you feel that, you know, that you're, be, you're being stretched in many different directions, uh, do you feel that um, you have a lot of stress on your shoulders, a lot of, a lot of burden, a lot of responsibilities that are, that are almost overwhelming and that, and that you, just, you just want to take a break, you just, want to, you just want to go on vacation permanently and just disappear sometimes or crawl into a hole. If you have any of those symptoms, I guarantee you're living in the Pop-Tart world. A Pop-Tart is an agent who jumps out of their seat at an opportunity as opposed to making sure that opportunity fits to their plan. So that example, the most classic example is you have a listing, you get a phone call from a buyer and they say, hey, I want to see this house in three hours from now. That's what I'm free to see it. I need to see it in three hours from now. And instead of checking your calendar, instead of making sure that it fits with your schedule, you drop what you're doing. Now, it's easy to say, no, I'm sorry, I have another showing booked at that time or I'm listening to that time. I can't show that property to you. But, and that's okay and that's good. But a lot of times people also make the mistake of saying, well, all I'm doing is family dinner, so I can skip the dinner for now. Or all I'm doing is prospecting, so I can skip prospecting because what's more important, dealing with this lead that's actually in front of me or calling up random people and trying to follow up with my open house from last week or cold calling Fizbo's to see if I can get some more appointments. This is the real appointment right now, so obviously that's more important, right? So drop what I'm doing and chase that opportunity. Wrong. That is the worst thing to possibly do, and I'll tell you why. Because first of all, you're burning your plan. You're not respecting yourself or your time. And you're gonna find more often than not, if you run out there and chase that opportunity, you're actually not gonna have anything happen. Because what you're doing is you're showing that person that one, you don't value your time. So now they're gonna demand you to do whatever they want at all times, if they ever talk to you again. Number two, there's a very good chance if that buyer demands to see a house at three o'clock and that's it, and it has to be that time, that they're not a real buyer. They're either a neighbor who just wants to see the house because they're listing the house with somebody else and they want to see that property on their schedule only, or they are a buyer who's working with another agent and again, they want to make sure that it fits in their time they don't care about you. They're not valuing your time. If they actually are a real buyer, there's a good chance they're going to put an offer with somebody else because again, they don't respect you and your time. So don't jump out of your seat. Make sure that it fits your schedule. There's a saying I have here around the office, which is when you're dealing with clients and customers, and they ask a request of you, you wanna answer yes, but on your terms. It needs to fit within your schedule because that's how a professional lives their life. A professional is somebody who says, I have business time, my professional time, and I have my personal time, and the two don't intermix. It is so key to keep the two separate. When you have a family date night, when you have a trip booked, that is just as important as a listing appointment is. And if somebody says to you, I wanna see a house, and you have a listing appointment booked at the same time, you're gonna say, no, I'm already booked. So why do you do it any different when you have a family date night booked? That is actually almost more important than a listing appointment. This guy is only gonna be there for a month or two of your life. This person's there for the next 20 years plus the rest of your life, quite frankly. So make sure you keep that in perspective. Personal and professional times shouldn't mix. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't massage things and move them around. You're a professional, you can manage your time. That's the whole point of this. But that means that also you need to respect that time. One way to do that is by having simple rules and goals. If you use simple rules and goals to manage your time, you're going to see a lot more success in your day. So I do a few things. I, I use a, a time quadrant to manage my time. We'll talk about that in a minute when we get down to that section. Uh, as well, I also uh, like to budget my time using this time quadrant. I'm somebody who hates to bean count. Now there are agents out there that are very, very good at you know budgets and uh, and uh, you know checking off uh, every minute of their day. And if that's your skill set, great for you. More power to you. For me and for a lot of other agents out there, they're going to find that following a very complex uh, diet or budget is not something that is uh, very easy to follow. So instead, have a very simple rule that you can remember in the back of your head always to manage your business. We'll talk about that in a minute. Next is setting some goals to create good habits. 
Now, goals are not Mount Everest. It's not, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. It's, I'm going to achieve small steps every day. That's successful goals. There's a rule that I use. It's, it's a very famous philosophy called the 20 mile march. And what that is saying is that if you need to march a thousand miles, what you do is you set a goal of 20 miles every single day. And when the weather's great and it's easy to go at 20 miles is no big deal. You can do it in a blink of an eye. It's, it's a breeze, very low stress, very low effort. Awesome. Those are the times you actually are resting. During the hard times when the weather's really tough, when it's, you know, it's a lot of crises coming at you, that is when you need to pour on the gas, but still achieve your 20 mile march. And if you do this rhythmically, if you kind of maintain that march, you're going to see a lot more success and a lot less stress in your day versus if you're spastically running when it's great and then holding back when it's worse. So small goals, simple rules that allows you to achieve the things you want to achieve. For me, small, small goals can be very small things like I made my bed today. I'm going to empty my inbox before I turn off my laptop at nighttime. I'm going to only return phone calls uh, during my booked blank times on my schedule. I'm going to have lunch. That's a really important thing. A lot of agents skip having lunch. If you're not eating food and you're feeling drained and lethargic by three o'clock in the afternoon, there's a reason why. You'll sell less homes and make less money if you skip lunch. So book lunch into your calendar. It's one of the most important things you can do for yourself every day. Um, number three is triage incoming items. This is key. You want to make sure that crisis is coming at you or being managed effectively. A professional, again, has a plan and they fit things into their plan. They're not reactionary. They don't pop out of their seat when a call comes and they don't drop everything they're doing to handle a crisis. Instead, they triage that crisis and decide how to fit that thing into their schedule. So I'll show you what I mean by that in the next slide here. Uh, quadrant four. Uh, so the four quadrants of time management are a really effective way to, to see time, to frame time. And you may have seen this before. If not, this is a really easy uh, visual aid to help you understand. So on this row here, sort of column here, you have important and non-important. And then up here in the rows, you have urgent and non-urgent. And then each quadrant is associated with one of those, or those two uh, uh, criteria. So uh, a crisis a moment is where a lot of uh, agents get sucked into. And this is where Pop-Tarts live. If you feel the stress of life, if you feel that you're always 15 minutes late, if you are constantly being reactionary, you're living in this space. A professional lives in this space that's planned and that's executed effectively. Now understand that you can't plan for crises, they're thrown at you. That's gonna be personal crises like your school calls because your kid is sick and they're going to the hospital. Obviously that's gonna be a major uh, upset to your day. Uh, or it could be something like your uh, buyer calls you very, uh, very distraught because their mortgage broker just told them that they're no longer approved or they got fired from their job and they're no longer able to, to fund the, the mortgage. Uh, but there's always options, so don't let any deal die. So crises are things that jump out at you out of the blue. Now what you need to do is you need to triage that crisis. So this is um, an important way to manage business. So in the military, it's a risk assessment or framing risk. What you need to do is you need to go, okay, this thing's coming at me. How much time do I have before the, the, the level of risk increases? And an example would be if someone has a knife and they're charging at you, obviously the risk is increasing every second, getting much, much more dangerous as get closer and closer to you. So that risk level is greatly increasing and you need to drop what you're doing and deal with that incoming risk immediately. However, if the risk, the risk is heavy, but not changing very quickly, you have more time to plan and put it into here. An example of a, of a, of a heavy uh, load of stress would be getting subpoenaed from court if you are getting sued. Obviously, that's a very stressful and a very upsetting experience. And if you're not somebody who can triage that risk, it may ruin your day. Instead of stewing about it, burning your opportunities, skipping appointments, not doing prospecting. Instead, what you do is you go, oh, that sucks, I have to deal with this now. And what you do is you go, well, I have three weeks to respond to this subpoena, so I have lots of time to fit this into my day and mar my week, and then plan for how to respond to it in the future. So the trick is to take a crisis and move it into here. And again, this is where professionals live. This is your prospecting time. This is your uh, hot list time. This is your showings. This is your listing appointments. This is also your family time. This is your date night. This is your gym time. This is your hour of reading a book before you go to bed every night. This is your downtime. This is your, I like to have two hours after eight, eight o'clock at night to watch TV with my kids. Whatever, this is planned, so that's good. This, however, is interruptions that are not important, but are urgent. An example of that would be phone calls. Your phone beeps, your, your, your knee-jerk reaction is to pick up the phone and answer it. And again, if you have blank time in your schedule, go ahead. But 
if you are prospecting, if you are at a listing appointment, you don't pick up the phone. And, and that's the key. People need to realize that. Just appointments are not any less important than sorry, any less important than any other appointment. If you're not going to pick up the phone in the middle of a listing appointment to answer a buyer call or or any other random call, why do you do it during an important, very important appointment like prospecting? Why would you do that? You think, well, that makes sense. That's an important thing to do. No, it's not. It's not important because if it's ur it's urgent, that phone only rings five times before it ends. But you need to make sure that you take that not important urgent item and move it into here. So what I do, my tip is, I don't answer the phone until the top of the hour. I schedule in blank time on my schedule between my appointments. That's part of not being frazzled. Is I leave lots of time between each appointment so that I can answer my phone. I can check my messages. I can respond to a couple emails. So that way I'm not rushed and frazzled. Last one here is quadrant four, time wasters. That's you sitting on Facebook checking your messages. That's you playing games, you know, during business time. No, that's not that's not planned relaxation time, which is up here. This is you. You should be at three o'clock picking up the phone, calling your open house uh, leads from last week. Instead, you're on Facebook wasting time because that's easier for you to do. So you want to eliminate this as much as possible. You want to make sure that this has its space in here and you want to take these items and move them into here as much as possible. If you can do that with your life, if you can see everything coming at you as an opportunity to have a plan, you'll be much more calm, much more relaxed and make a lot more money. The trick to time management is planning and making everything fit within your plan and giving yourself a lot of wiggle room so that you are not rushed and frazzled. Agents that sell more homes that make more money are not frazzled. The agent who sells one home a month, who is constantly chasing and chasing and chasing, way more frazzled. So which one do you want to be? Do you want to be a Pop-Tart or a professional? Choice is yours. I wish you the best. Happy selling.